forward uh, to hearing your life story. And it all began for you in the parish of Arnis. Yes, it did. And uh, of course, I was very young when I became secretary of the National Ploughing Association. But look, I, I grew up in the parish of Arnis and I was the fifth member in a family of eight, five boys and three girls. And we were farming at home and we had a great lifestyle. Now, well, reasonably good lifestyle. We helped in the farm, of course, and all of that as we were growing up. So five brothers, three sisters, and all of you married, the three sisters married three farmers, I Yes, believe. we did, yes, and the five boys farmed as well. My God. Yeah. Yeah. You went to school locally? In yeah, yes, in Ballylinen, St. Patrick's School, in Bally, National School yeah. in Ballylinen. Very good school, of course, and uh, we enjoyed it to a degree, of course, if we had our homework done, we enjoyed it all the better. And had you far to walk to school at that time? No, we went by Coney and Trap. Uh, to school and uh, if the evenings were wet we were collected by Pony and Trap as well but then if the evenings were fine we walked home and I can tell you that it took a long time to get home because you were walking along with other children very safe to go on the roads then and you know sometimes people would say oh you're getting home from school like the houses that we'd be passing by and it was lovely lovely experience when one looks back on that now. So after the local national school here, you went to a Thai? I cycled to St. Bridges uh, Technical School in a Thai, and uh, it was, well, four and a half to five miles. I did a commercial course there, uh, short on bookkeeping and typing, and uh, that's where I came from then. And I suppose there's some lovely memories as well of uh, those days in the vocational school in a Thai. Of course and I have, and, and, uh, and the staff particularly, because the teachers were lovely, and... Um, you know, we have fond memories of that and indeed fond memories too of cycling into school and cycling home with people as well uh, and particularly on a Tuesday when it was market day in a Thai, uh, you would always meet up with somebody who had been in doing shopping and you'd be chatting the whole way home to them. So there were memories as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was during those teenage years that you uh, got involved in Camogie. We did. We formed a Camogie club in Ballylinen and... Uh, God, we had wonderful days. We had very disappointing days as well because we were there for a few years before we won anything worthwhile. We got affiliated to the county board, the county camogie board, and of course we had to have uniforms. And uh, I, uh, with fond memories, I can remember Chrissy Murphy. Uh, she had a supermarket in Ballylinen and she was a Kilkenny person out and out. She was from Bennettsbridge and she absolutely loved hurling. She never missed an All-Ireland hurling uh, final. But she sponsored our Komogi uniforms, there were gym frocks at the time, and it was wonderful because we didn't have any fun starting off. I remember so well at her funeral, they sang the Rose of Mokine when as she was leaving the church, and that was lovely. And she was so kind to us in other ways, she often gave us things too that we, to help us along the way, because she could Kenny out and out hurling, <laughs> and it was very close to her heart. And um, we had some very good players. So I was very fortunate and I was selected on the, we played for the county, uh, on the county team. And then from there I was selected to go on the Leinster team. So I ended up with five interprovincial medals. But uh, I love the Komori and I love hurling as even today. I love to go to a final in Dublin if the time permits me to do so. And um, particularly the All-Ireland final. And I love GA really, yeah. I think. It's a wonderful organisation for the country and particularly for the young people. I think it's marvellous. So what was your first job after leaving school, Anna May? Well, um, I, I, JJ Bergen from Athai was the founder of the National Ploughing Association and he was friendly with my father. He asked him would I give him some office assistance for a month or two. And of course I agreed to go, went down on a, a Friday and the rest is history. I never left it. <laughs> and you know... Uh, I grew up with a den and it grew with me as well but uh, he was a lovely person to work with and a wonderful man if you did something wrong he always corrected you in a very nice way and in fact to me he was a teacher as well and I found that I got great ideas from him I was a big help to him obviously and I remember his very last address he did say it was a public function he did say when I leave the association, he said, I hope I'm leaving behind me a walking machine. And all afterwards, that time, Michael, I really thought that he was referring to me as the walking machine. But I remember very well, and young at the time, the responsibility of it, I was secretary, 
And I remember the Wexford representative at the time saying to me, we're holding you responsible for everything now until we have our AGM. But I kept everything intact. And then there was a, a Sean O'Farrell, again a Kilkenny man, was appointed managing director, who incidentally was a great hurler for Kilkenny. And uh, he had a brother, uh, Father Pat, who was in Cairns. And of course, they were teaching hurling from the time that they were nearly able to walk. But uh, he was managing director then until 73. And it was at that time then that I was appointed managing director, but held on to the job as general secretary as well. And it was the wishes of the um, our executive committee that I knew everything about the ploughing and that I would fit into the job. So I really felt then that everything was on my shoulders. It was like concrete blocks put on my shoulders then. I remember the day well at that AGM when I was appointed manager director. I said, oh God, I, I, you know, I, I just couldn't write my name down. I was that excited about it in one way, frightened of the responsibility. And uh, it wasn't as common as it is now that women would be in agricultural organisations. It was absolutely all men that I was dealing with. But uh, they got used to it. And I have to say that um, uh, the men folk that I was dealing with, you know, they were always very kind. And maybe I wouldn't have got away with as much if I had been a man. Uh, they were always very good. And I always said to them, look, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just asking you to do such a thing and delegate them, giving them responsibility. And, uh, you know, the growth of the association has been beyond all our expectations, you know, in today's world now. Uh, we'll return to the National Plough Association in a little while, but there's another association that has been very, very close to your heart down through the years. There is, uh, of course, uh, Michael, the ICA, of course, the Irish Country Women's Association. When we started in Bally Line, and I remember the very first meeting we had of all the ladies, uh, we had a, a, a speaker coming from Port Harrington who told us all about the ICA, and uh, we were delighted to hear everything, but then she said we'd, we'd have to appoint officers that night, uh, it was important to have a president, a secretary and a treasurer and a PRO. So, of course, everybody was looking at everybody else and nobody was volunteering. I can't say whether I was volunteered, but whether there was a bit of pressure put on me or not, I, I just can't remember now. But I did take on the presidency that year and uh, we, we, that was in 64 and we celebrated our Golden Jubilee. Uh, last year and we had the national president Liz Wall down on that night and we had a wonderful function where again it all started down in Ballylinen in the hall we had the caterers that came in beautiful night and lovely presentations made to us and acknowledgements and uh, mind you for many of the ladies then including myself it was an outlet we had monthly meetings and you had your social half hour which you could chat to your neighbours or you could find out something about your neighbours and you know it wasn't just all about tea making now there were a lot of uh, other work done and we'd get uh, some guest speaker in maybe even if it was about making a will we'd get a solicitor we'd get a florist to give a demonstration of flower arrangements lace making a lot of that a lot of very useful demonstrations in those years when people were less able to get out and travel, you know, and particularly women that had large families. Where is the ICA at the moment in Ireland? Do you still see a huge role for them to play? Well, it's a difficult one because we find that it's, it's hard to get in young members. Uh, the reason being is that most of the young housewives now are working and the time is not there as it was years ago. But uh, some might feel, well, there's nothing I can get from the ICA, but there is. You have to be in it to achieve something out of it. Even if it's only friendship, it's something wonderful. When we return, Anna Mae tells us about the first plan championship, the association today, her family and her hobbies. Thank you.